Hey guys, welcome in 10 episode of From the News Podcast today, as always. I'm here with Tomasz and I'm here with a great bunch of news. Tomasz, how was your week? Thank you, Chris. Uh, my week was amazing. Uh, I did get the vaccine for COVID-19. Oh, how it was. I feel no pain during the injection. <laughs> Not in the vaccine. <laughs> it hurts. No, just kidding. And uh, yeah, I stayed at home just to rest. And that's it. How was your week, Chris? Oh, it's the first time you asked. Thank you. <laughs> it was amazing. I was preparing this news for you guys. So let's see what we have today. First one is about web containers. Yeah, the second one is about the future of Internet Explorer. The third one is about translate to speech in HTML. The fourth one will be about the Sublime text and its new release. The next one about Parcel 2. And the last one will be about our lovely guest in almost each chapter, Node.js updates. Stay tuned and watch the intro. The first one is about web containers. Tomasz, what has changed? Okay, so uh, nothing has changed. Uh, this is the new stuff. So um, web containers allow us to run Node.js code directly in our browser. So you do not need, uh, you do not require any server to uh, handle the Node.js apps. Thanks to the um, Stack Blitz team, they produce the solution that allow you to create full stack Node.js projects and run them directly in your browser, which uh, makes it really fast, really efficient and secure by default. Could you explain a little bit uh, the use cases for this one? Um, yeah, the use case is quite simple. Imagine that uh, you use the Next.js application and uh, for example, you want to have a server-side rendering that will handle, you know, rendering your components and send the HTML direct to the client. And uh, imagine that you don't have to send the request somewhere to the server, which could be not in Poland, it can be everywhere, like everywhere. Okay, and okay. Uh, instead of that, you have server in your browser on the client side. So um, the server side rendering will be handled much faster uh, because the way that requests need to uh, cross, came across is really short. It's like, you know, almost zero time response. Okay, thank you, Tomasz. I hope you guys get it. I don't. So let's jump into Internet Explorer. I want to uh, make a short notice about the Internet Explorer in today's chapter. Uh, on the ninth episode, we spoke that Vue uh, really, yes. 3 drop the support for Internet Explorer. Vue and Angular, I believe. Yep, exactly. The future of this browser is um, really uh, clean, like, you know, it will be dead soon. But what is interesting, the Windows 10 drops support for Internet Explorer at June 15th in 2022. Okay, so it's like one year still to support this browser. You will be still able to uh, run the ded dedicated Internet Explorer web apps if you want. Let's focus on the modern internet and on the modern web apps and leave the Internet Explorer Alone. Rest in peace. Alone. Alone. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking about modern web, um, I think we have very good news for HTML and for speech to text. Yeah, exactly. Let me explain uh, what it's all about. So we have a draft for the new specification that is uh, dedicated for the text to uh, speech functionality. Right now we have different engines that uh, translates text and HTML document content to, uh, to speech. Okay. But those engines translate it in different ways. So we might have uh, differences on the same application 
on different devices because the engines was different. Okay, you got it? Yeah. Cool. So um, there is a proposal to um, combine all the rules and standardize, you know, all the engines. Accepting this proposal will uh, make it happen. So finger crossed for that and for the Accessible Platform Architectures Working Group uh, because they are uh, the owners, the creators of this proposal. And I will be looking for t from time to time how, how the situation is moving and hopefully it will become the standard as soon as possible. That sounds great. Do you know anything about like multi-language support? Yeah, multi-language support is something that I did not find information about. So probably it will be like more from... Mm, hmm. This is the good question, actually. Please. Uh, yeah. Um, I have only good questions, Thomas. Um, and hard sometimes. Uh, but yeah, uh, multi-language is something that, that should be supported, yes, because uh, we do not ha want to have only like English version, but uh, for the very first iteration, maybe that there will be like only single language. It should be, but it's not that easy. We have a lot of languages, as you know. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Okay, let's see. Let's How many? <laughs> How many languages we have, Chris? And this is for our... <laughs> <laughs> we have only JavaScript. Guys, come on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> nice. I was about to say like we can have a contest that who who will guess the correct number of languages will win. Oh, selfie with us or something. So no selfie, but we still have a couple great news for you. The next one is about Sublime Text. Yeah, exactly. For you guys who are working in web development a really long time, you probably met the Sublime Text Editor and somehow we work with it for a while or maybe for a long time. I were familiar with Sublime Text version 2 when I start working in your first company, Chris. Oh, really? Yes, you showed me this uh, IDE and since that I was using it for like... A long time. The thing that I really like in the Sublime is that it was highly customizable. You know, you just uh, need to override the configuration, set some params. Uh, there were plenty of add-ons that uh, extend the functionality of this IDE. And it was amazing. It was uh, free for use? It was, yeah. Okay, and um, I have uh, really great memories with that IDE. And yeah, we did receive a new version, which is a uh, four, fourth one. And what has changed? First of all, the license has changed. Uh, you need to check it on your own, how it looks like. Uh, it's because it will be like different license for different versioning. And I think, uh, as far as I remember, that that was the change. The next thing is uh, tab multi-select, so we can select a uh, few tabs and, for example, close them at once. Breaking news. Uh, yeah, and um, the Sublime will be supporting the Apple Silicon and Linux ARM64 architecture, uh, which is great. We have re we did receive the refreshed UI, and the last thing is uh, context aware autocomplete, so they really boost the new version of the Sublime text. And if you want to check it, just, you know, download it and use it and do whatever you want with your life. Thank you. That's great, Tomasz. So now let's talk about Parcel 2. Yeah, Parcel 2 Beta 3 in the house. So uh, the Parcel is the engine that compiles the uh, Rust code. And we have a new version of this compiler which is 10 times faster than the previous one. 10 times. Exactly. Wow. Uh, it's, it's a big number. It is. We receive a lot of uh, speed boost, um, optimizations around performance and the whole Rust ecosystem. This is the tool that, as I mentioned in the last chapters, we can utilize it to create the complete and complex web applications, uh, both on the backend and the frontend side. So this tool is like, great tool for the full stack developers, uh, which enjoy uh, producing the apps on the both sides of the force. Yeah, the question is, do we have a lot of specialists on the market that use the Rust language? I don't recommend it. Yeah, um, exactly. You know, 
definitely it, this is something that is worth to track because the popularity of uh, the Rust ecosystem grow uh, year by year. But uh, for sure, next years will show uh, in which direction the web development world will go. And definitely the JavaScript is number one. Exactly. That's it from, uh, from the Rust world. That's it. That's it. And our favorite, the last one, but not the least, Node.js. Node.js version 16.2.0 and it will be never boring to tell you the release number. I love it. No, just kidding. Um, we receive a bunch of updates from the core library side, from the HTTP, from the net and from other uh, different parts of the Node.js. And as always, if you want to know what's going on, uh, check it on your own, on their website, on their release notes. The link, as always, Chris, where? In, in the, the description. description. <laughs> that's true. Um, that's it from uh, from the news portion from my side for today. It's also that's it for this episode. So guys, check our socials like Instagram, YouTube, Spotify, and Facebook. And look for us in the internet. Look for the best front-end news team in the world. This is us. <laughs> See you next time.